As the justices who hear these matters are grossly overstretched, unable to meet the demands of their onerous assignment, the litigants who approach the court seeking justice are left in limbo, waiting endlessly, endlessly for justice to be served. These, as I have said before, are avoidable. While I exit today, the North Central Zone that I represent ceases to have any representation until such a time new appointments are made. My Lord Honorable Justice Jembe Eko, who also represented the, the zone, retired on the 23rd of May 2022. My Lord Honorable Justice Sylvester Mwani Mbuta, JSC, died on the 7th of March 2021. I repeat, 2021. There has not been any appointment in his stead for the South. To ensure justice and transparency in presidential appeals, thank God we have been hard and determined. All geopolitical zones need to be represented. They are required to participate in the hearing of such appeals. It is therefore dangerous, or it was therefore dangerous, for democracy and equity for two entire regions to be left out in the decisions that affect the generality of Nigerians. In the face of the massive workload, but with few numbers to perform the enormous duty, another eminent jurist is taking a ceremonious bow from Nigeria's judicial scene. Justice Musa Detiju, after giving 47 years of service to Nigeria in the justice sector, is retiring as a Supreme Court Justice, leaving 10 where there should be 21 justices of the Apex Court. Chief Justice of Nigeria, Boluka Ariwola, understanding the immediate impact of the fast dwindling numbers on the Supreme Court bench, said that something urgent was in the offing to remedy the situation, a view echoed by the Attorney General and Minister of Justice, Latif Fagbemi. We are now left with just 10 justices on the Supreme Court bench, being the lowest we have ever had in contemporary history of the court. However, I can confidently assure all the litigant public that efforts are in top gear to get on board a sizable number of justices to boast our rank and complement the tremendous effort we have been investing in the business of the court. President Bola Abetinubu has given assurance to give an expedited treatment of the appointment once he receives the recommendation of the relevant organ concerned in this regard, that is to say, the National Judicial Council, NJC. Justice Musa Tatiju has been the second in command in the Supreme Court hierarchy until this Friday, his 70th birthday, and his day of retirement from the Supreme Court bench, hence this ceremony. But Justice Tatiju, who has given 47 years of service, raises a serious issue plaguing the judiciary by disclosing that the Chief Registrar of the Apex Court in Nigeria earns much higher than the justices, making a key point on poor welfare. Supreme Court is the Apex Court. And yet, the Chief Registrar of this court earns much more than I do, earns much more than we all do, and nobody talked. While she earns 1.2 million a month, justices take home 751,000 naira. He also faults the concentration of powers in the office of the Chief Justice of Nigeria. The Chief Justice of Nigeria heads the National Judicial Council, a body responsible for the appointment and discipline of judges, and heads at least three other bodies, including that which appoints senior advocates of Nigeria. Such enormous powers are effortlessly abused. This needs to change. Continued denial of the existence of this threatening anomaly weakens effective judicial, uh, judicial oversight in the country. He also recommends that all geopolitical zones be represented in presidential election panels moving forward while faulting the non-representation of the North Central and South East in the Apex Court as presently constituted. To ensure justice and transparency in presidential appeals, Thank God we have been hard and determined. All
all geopolitical zones need to be represented. They are required to participate in the hearing of such abuse. This is a ceremony to bid farewell to a jurist who has given over four decades of service to the country and in the same breath provides an opportunity for both the bar and the bench to address issues affecting the judiciary. We are now being joined by a former Nigerian Bar Association NBA president, Dr. Olisa Agbakoba, to discuss the takeaways from the judgment and impact on Nigeria's electoral jurisprudence. Very good to have you on the show, uh, Dr. Abakoba. Let me just get straight into it because we are short on time. I want to discuss INEC and the role that they have played in this entire situation, their culpability. Uh, how can it be remedied um, in time for the next electoral season to make sure that INEC uh, keeps to the promises that they make? And when they don't keep to those promises, that there's some kind of consequence that falls on their laps rather than the laps of uh, Nigerians in general. Uh, it's as if you absolutely read, read my mind, because when I was discussing here with a colleague, I said I wasn't going to discuss anything about the merits of the decision. So I'm happy you, uh, you, you, you hit the nail on the head. The, the, the main culprit in all of this is INEC. Actually, I must salute both Peter B. Atiku and all the uh, petitioners, because a lot of the allegations, at least 90% of the allegations, in respect of the petitions, was against INEC. Bungling the entire thing, lying to us that the elections would be electronic. When they didn't do it, they turned around and then said it was manual, and that there's no law compelling them to to do it electronically, which is true. So I think what you ask is pertinent. We don't want this to repeat again in 2027. So here are the first suggestions I would make. I was a member of the waste panel set up by the late uh, Yaradwa as a result of the bad elections of that time. So number one is for the National Assembly to be more serious this time and implement every aspect of the waste commission. That's number one. Number two is for this present INEC to acknowledge that they've done us a disservice. And I repeat what I've always said, that the chairman of INEC ought to resign. The, the, the National Assembly now needs to clean up the Electoral Act, take into account all the challenges we faced. I will recommend that all elections will for, from now be mandatory. It is not for INEC to have a discretion when they bungle to say that uh, they have no duty to do what the law says they should do. I also like to see INEC lose control over regulating political parties. It was a major recommendation we made under the Waste Panel. We talked about the need to have a political party's regulatory authority. I'd also like to see INEC stop being Nigeria's greatest printer. Ballot boxes, ballot papers, that's not their job. What we should get INEC to focus on would be to be the electoral umpire. And then the other point that came out very strongly from this uh, p petition was the question whether President Tinubu ought to have been sworn in whilst the petitions were pending. To resolve that issue would be to say that the law should be amended so that all petitions must conclude. INEC must not be an active defendant. It will be an independent party, but it will not take part in petitions in future. That will make it more neutral. And we ought to dispense with this issue of INEC holding electoral documents. Like, like in the Kenyan case, I will recommend that there will be a major platform where all relevant electoral results are uploaded. And all the court needs to do is not to rely on INEC, but to rely on the uploaded documents. That will make things quite quick. So these are generally my thoughts on how to improve this, the process. 
Now, thank you so much for that. A lot of Nigerians have questioned the integrity of the judiciary, with the opposition saying that the executive has hijacked you know, the judiciary. So I'm wondering, how can we restore confidence of Nigerians in the judiciary going forward? Well, I think it's for the judiciary to themselves understand that there's a very low confidence as to how they've done their work and to take it as a very serious matter that to restore public confidence would mean to give decisions that make sense. It was entirely up to them at the National Judicial Council to make sure that they maintain their oath of office to do justice without fear or favor. That's all. And um, still speaking about judiciary integrity, um, I'm wondering if uh, the Supreme Court should be the final uh, bus stop in terms of matters uh, like this, especially in this situation. Is it possible that their uh, decisions could be subject to a review by another body? Uh, is that something that could be introduced? And uh, because it seems that the confidence no. has been, you know, e eroded, especially within election matters, should there be an independent body looking at these things either before or after the, uh, the judgments? Is that even possible? No, no, it's not possible. The Supreme Court is the last court of restart in Nigeria. So what is important, because even if you had a new court, what makes you think that all the issues you describe won't afflict the new one? So it's just to strengthen the institutions, to, to strengthen INEC, to strengthen the judiciary, to strengthen the constitutional process in Nigeria, to strengthen the way the National Assembly works, and just to have a new political culture. Because unfortunately, the political culture that our political parties exhibit is very low. And you can't legislate on this. So it's something that they ought to take into account, that we can't have this sort of problem every four years. It's a big disappointment. Now, I know that some people are of the opinion that we shouldn't be talking about electoral amendments. Instead, we should be talking about drafting a new constitution. I'd like to know where you stand on this argument. Where I stand is that the Nigerian uh, federal system is centrifugal, it's a pyramid at the top, and that's not gonna work. So some people have described the problem as the need for political restructuring, some describe it as rebalancing the federation, but whatever, I call it devolving powers from the federal to the states, so that there's a proper balance. So I know that under President Buhari, a couple of amendments went through. But I think the National Assembly ought to be more articulate and organized as to how it can transfer power from the center to the states. So the entire thing is balanced. But now the competition to be Nigerian president is too strong because all the, all the, all, all the powers in, in Nigeria reside in the president. Nigerian president is the strongest in the world. So we need to tone it down. We need to make the states more important so that there is a good balance of development. And some of these states that go cap in hand begging for money in Abuja every month should realize that they have the natural resources to survive. But because we have designed a political system that makes Abuja attractive, everyone wants to go there. So one of the ways to deal with this overheating the judiciary is to redistribute power so the governor a governor is really a governor. Right now, a governor is not a governor. A governor is at the mercy of the president. So th those are the things I think will cool down the temperature in Nigeria. And in terms of the election petitions that were put together by the opposition parties, there were, uh, it was a high barrier of uh, proving uh, whatever it was that they were trying to uh, prove. What takeaways and what lessons uh, in your opinion, can be learned on both sides in terms of submitting applications and getting witnesses and all the other uh, seemingly uh, difficult points that they had um, in order to file in this petition? Mm. It was more the point of a time challenge. 21 days to, to file a, a petition 
in respect of a presidential election is Herculean. You've got to take evidence in your pleadings of about 180,000 polling booths. You've got to show what errors occurred in these polling booths. The time is simply not sufficient. So it's more about changing the structure of our electoral process. If it were possible to have, and it is possible, a national dashboard where everything relating to the election is posted, then nobody needs to go to INEC to get documents. You don't even, to, you don't even need to refer to it in a big bundle. All you do is to highlight your problems and the complaints in a simple, straightforward petition. So that will cut the type of complex pressure that the uh, lawyers to both the petitioner and the respondents are put under. So I wouldn't blame them. 21 days is not enough to even do an ordinary case, not talk about a very complex case like a presidential uh, petition. Now, the Supreme Court did not entertain evidence from the Chicago State University due to lack of jurisprudence to jurisdiction to entertain the matter. But is this the end of this controversy surrounding the identity of the president, or do you see it lingering, probably into the next election circle? I refuse to make a comment on that because I, I, I like to stay with policy issues. Is it sensitive? to be spending 140 million. If I give you 140 million Naira cash to take it to your central district, won't your people benefit from it? Let, let me tell you, Sean. I don't want to go personal now. I don't want to go personal. Those, that same vehicle that you're talking of, before coming to the National Assembly, I have vehicle that I have. You got on that? But this is Nigerian money. Yes, so and Nigeria does not have money at the moment. So 26 point something uh, uh, inflation rate with over 34 percent of Nigerians so unemployed. Are we supposed with to over 134 so. million Nigerians multidimensionally poor? Is it sensitive that those who are supposed to represent the people go to Abuja and lavish themselves with luxury vehicle? Is that sensitive, Senator? Yeah, are we supposed to do our oversight function tracking or going without uh, vehicles? Maybe you could have, cons I mean, considered a, a, a more cheaper vehicles maybe, to get the job done. Maybe, maybe, maybe the, a car. Maybe, uh, maybe a sedan. If I travel to... Maybe okay. a 25 million naira worth of sedan if vehicle I, you, might do the job. If I travel to my constituency with a car now, by the time I go three, four times, you know Nigerian roads. Is that not an indictment on you, those of you who are in power? That what? Those of you who are leaders in Nigeria today, is that not an indictment? Uh, and we have bad roads in the state, in your local government, in the senatorial district. Is that not an indictment that not, those of you who are in power? It's, it's a discussion for another day. You see the level of... Uh, but like Nigerians suffer for the inefficiency of those who are in power, let me tell Senator? You, if you look at Nigerian roads all over the Federation, that we have a serious problem. Because nothing much has been done in the last few years. Most of our roads they are terribly bad. In fact, the government cannot even have fun enough to work on those roads. We have to go back into a PPPM, a five point uh, partnership arrangement where people can invest through those roads and get their money in return. It is, it is done. We, we will find out whether or not what you are doing is illegal or what you are doing as a senator or as, as lawmakers in the eye of the law is right or wrong or whether or not it's morally uh, justified. But Section 84 of the Nigerian Constitution empowers Ramfak to mandate or determine the salaries, allowances of public officials, including members of the National Assembly. And this is what Ramfak, based on the last published uh, 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 figure of the sa basic salary of a senator. It says that a senator earns two point something million naira. Therefore, with that, a senator should be entitled to about 8.1 million naira worth of vehicle, which is about 400% of your basic salary. That is what the law on the Ramfak says, senator. And for your colleagues in the lower chamber, 
Their basic salary as last published was about 1.9 million. And you can draw a car loan uh, to, the, to the extent of uh, 7.9 million, but you can't exceed that. That is what the Ramfuck law says. But if you're buying a vehicle of 140 million naira, based on this, it I've, says something is wrong. I'm not even, don't forget that I've not, I, I didn't tell you that we were, we, I don't even know the figure as I'm talking to you. Because it's not my responsibility. If you are buying a Land Cruiser, we've done our own research and I've given you a median of I've, what I've it just, costs in the market right now. No, but, so be, we heard that the cost that National Assembly is getting is 160 million. But I've taken that figure and put it under the table. I've given you a 140 million. Prado is about 85 to 90 million naira. So let's assume that you're buying in that 140 million, no matter what the case may be, Senator. Can you look Nigerians in the eye tonight and say what you are doing is sensible and appeal to the sensibilities to the of Nigerians who are poor, some of them who cannot even afford a food on their table tonight, some of them will go hungry without being able to provide for their families, some of them who are multidimensionally poor, dollar to a naira is about 1,250, and we have our lawmakers buying this kind of vehicle. Is that right? Is that justifiable, Senator? Um, sure. Is the only Nigerians senators and also members that are using but does it make it right if you're not the only one and? i mean and i'm not i'm not making any allegations against you and i'm just saying that um, can I, if can anybody is can doing ask, something can wrong ask, i'm not the only one doing it ask, other people can are can ask you a question Atio. go ahead please your mda is it by MDA or the head of your this thing what, what type of work is they using I use an SUV. That's why I told you SUV. it's, a, it's an S SUV. I use a mini SUV <laughs> based on the status of, of my role here. Yeah. And that's why I do why that in you she will buy Nigerian made vehicle? I have. My vehicle is a Nigerian, is produced here in Nigeria. Which was I use a GAC that was coupled in Lagos. Well, how, how much did you buy? It's a company, it's an official vehicle. So your your company chose to buy, to buy you official that. vehicle as a so, private organization so, but you are a public officer yeah, senator yeah. and that's why we are asking you and, tonight uh, you will and the equity I, must come with cleaner senator nigerians are suffering there's poverty in the land can you for a moment even jettison that idea to show nigerians that you guys are committed to the plight of the poor people that you cannot run government as usual can you are a member of the APC, a senior member of the APC? Can Nigerians trust the APC and the leaders of today that they really care about the people of this country? You know, assembly in, assembly out, we talk of the same thing. Maybe as, as a, a local manufacturing plant developer, we, we, we choose to we may choose to patronize. The GAC, in collaboration with the Lagos State Government, just launched 2,000 vehicles. There is innocent in Anambra State. There's another young yeah. man who is producing a vehicle that will be useful if you say utility vehicle. There's another Nigerian, just, his name just keep my mind right now. Not N O L D is a Nigerian young man producing vehicle, and this set of people will look at you, who are supposed to be leaders of Nigeria. How disappointed do you think they would be in you? We have not. I've just said that uh, in future we may this. We can't. We would. And surely as Nigerian mm -hmm. manufacturing sector develop. Senator, we'll you know to, a lot of Nigerians may not be happy with you guys right now. You, are you aware? You are seeing a lot of Nigerians there. Nigerians are not seeing other people in the executive. Is that the reason? The is, is that an excuse enough? Same vehicle? Is that an excuse Why enough? Why are you guys speaking on, picking on Nigerian? Because you are the representative of the people. Yeah. You have voted in office to feel the pain of the people. Yeah. Or it doesn't look like you guys are feeling it, are you? We're making a lot of sacrifice. You don't know. Including buying luxury vehicles. 